All right, man, I've seen that the Pistons watched some of the Hornets game last night. Um, they came, but they tried to make a big comeback in the fourth quarter. They gave it like 40 plus points or 40 points in the first quarter or something like that. They had a big second half scoring like 60 points in the second half. People was raving about Bagley and James Wiseman, a.k.a. Last Chance D. That's what they call the Pistons. Um, seen an article that said Troy Weaver loved the bus. <laughs> I hear people like just salivating over Bagley and Wiseman. Wiseman started. Bagley came off the bench. He put up a double double. And I'm just thinking, like, bro, I could see had they won. I could see had they been playing a better opponent. At at one point, they was down by like 20 points. I think even a little bit more than that. And I like what you're seeing from Wiseman, but you know. And Bagley coming back playing well. You got to think about it. They, what, less than 25 games left. He been resting 90% of the season. Of course, him and Wiseman is fresher than everybody else. And then they playing a team like Charlotte in which um, they playing a team in Charlotte who ain't playing for nothing. The mellow ball guy, he fractured his ankle last night or something. So they not literally playing for nothing. So it wasn't like they went up there to Boston. They put on that type of performance at all. You know, they, you know, like I said before, it's just a big mess with the Pistons. And they create more questions than solutions. You hear me out? They're creating more, que even with the removal of Nerlens Noel, they're creating more questions than solutions. You know, so Bagley have a couple good games. He fresher than everybody else. Wiseman ain't played in forever. They both have injury history. They fresher than everybody else. They're putting up great numbers, coming off the bench together, but they still give up a whole bunch of fucking points. That's the problem. Defense got to be the problem. Then you factor in Isaiah Stewart. What if he healthy? You factor in Dern. What if you healthy? What are you going to do? You, you can't keep having these guys overlap each other. You bring in RJ Hampton, right? You know, it's one thing to take a chance on a guy, um... And you don't really have, you know, let's say your guards is depleted, right? You want to say, well, we got this kid, John Summers. We we like what he's doing in the G League or, you know, he got cut from the the the, the Raptors. And, they you know, they he was behind Van Fleet and all this type of stuff, right? And we want to see what he can do, you know, and see if he really can consistently play in the last 20 games or so and see what he can do while her guards down and see what we got with him. That's not the case here. You got Isaiah Stewart that you hanging on to. You got Jalen Duran you just drafted. You throw Wiseman, you throw Bagley on top of each other. With one thing, all four of them got in common, they're all centers. No matter how much y'all want to sit and bite y'all tongue or hold y'all hands and bow y'all head and say a prayer, Isaiah Stewart is an undersized center in this league. No matter how much y'all probably imagining and salivating and probably about to have an orgasm about the Twin Towers of Wiseman and Bagley, they're both centers. Now, Wiseman has the ability probably to be more of a kind of a power forward, but we got to see where he continues to go health-wise and what he actually can do while he get a chance to play. And then Dern is more of a center, is more of a center. You know, he's athletic and he could, you know, athletic and, but, you know, um, the jump shot would have to improve today for that to happen to go in. The, so you got four centers that all play the same position. Who going to make it and who not going to make it? When you got all these dudes that do the same thing, it's not, it's not enough time for them to naturally grow in their positions. So at least two of these dudes going to have to get the hell on. And you're going to have to run with two of them guys, two of them, you know, and if you feel like two of them can work together, then you can keep three, maybe. But in my opinion, you got to run with two of these. You got to run with two of them and let them grow. You know, if it's one starting or if they part time starters or something like that and the best one take it. But all you doing and I know during injury right now, all you doing is overlapping the talent. That's it. That's all you're doing is hiding the talent. Somebody got to be a, somebody got to have a role and they have to be able to be, got a chance to get comfortable in a role. 
And if you want to roll with Wiseman and let him be comfortable in the role, fine. You want to roll with Dern and be comfortable in the role, fine. But you thinking that Wiseman and Stewart, Wiseman and Bagley, Dern, Stewart, Dern, and Bagley going to work with shit, even in my mind, Wiseman and Dern working, you smoking crack. All they doing is continuing to hinder these guys' development by continuing to stockpiling guys. You said the guard position. Where where do RJ Hampton post to spread his wings? Yeah, Ivy out, Cade out, but then you still got Alec Burke there. You know, do you throw Hampton in there and say, well, you and uh, Killian Hayes figure it out? Have y'all noticed? Ain't nobody work with Killian Hayes in the backcourt. Every time Killian Hayes is starting in the backcourt with somebody, they, you know, they got to make an adjustment. And, they, and then as soon as you take them out of the lineup, then they flourish. Even though Arthur Hampton is kind of a little different from Cade and, and uh, uh, Ivy, but history has showed us that whoever in the backcourt with, uh, with Killian is going to struggle. You know, that's what history showed us. And, you know, it is, it is what it is. He ball dominant. And today's, you know, a lot of these guys that bust today like RJ Hampton, they never learn without to play without the ball. And Killian can't play without the ball. And RJ Hampton, where is he struggling in Orlando? He can't play without the ball. So you got to draw shit up where you got him slashing to the rim. So you got to draw stuff up where he becomes a slasher like Holly Hami Diallo, who had a good game yesterday. So the best way to get to get you know uh, anybody playing with Hayes going is running up and down the floor. It's every time they get it, they should be when Hayes in the lineup, they should be pushing it. But they they're over you know they're overshadowing people' talent. You know you can't just do this on a pitcher rotation. Was it every three or four or five days, whatever, uh, a new ace come up? Every other game, oh show game, it's your game. These dudes need a consistent diet of minutes. They need a consistent, steady value, 2,000 calories or more of, 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 of nutrients for them to develop. They can't be worried about looking over their shoulder for Wiseman, looking over their shoulder for Stewart. That's going to be the thing about this team. They're going to need to shave a lot of the fat off this team once they get healthy. There's no way you should go into next year with, with, with Bagley, Stewart, Duran. And Wiseman all on this team and getting great minutes. It's hard enough you're gonna have Hayes, Duran, and K, maybe with an opportunity to add Scoot Henderson. You know what I'm saying? Unless you move out of there if that's one of the guys you that's left. You know. And then you got a question, you got a question on the wing. Isaiah Isaiah Livers, time for him to go. Love him to death. Can never stay healthy. You can't stay healthy in your twenties, my dog. You got you can't. It ain't gonna work. You know, Boyanovich. You know, Boyanovic and Burke should be coming off the bench for them next season. Diallo like what he bring. He should be coming off the bench for them next season. You know, now the turn. You know, like I said before, people want to hang on to Stewart at the four. You can't stop nobody with him at the four. With Boyanovic starting at the three, you can't stop nobody. You you can with Bagley at the four with Dern or uh or, or Wiseman, you can't stop nobody. When Detroit is good, they defend. They have to get guys in there who can complement Ivy K and and whoever gonna be playing center. Because all they doing is killing these kids' confidence even more by lapping them all on each other. Whoever gonna be the center, and in Caden Ivy, everything else has to complement them. Shooting and defense is, should be the should be the the recipe. Guys that we can develop into good defenders, great defenders, and guys who can shoot. That's what you need around them. Not these dudes who can't stop a nosebleed. This team, man, I, I don't really, I don't care what they do in the off season. They get Victor Walla banana. They get LeBron James, Prime James, whatever. They tend to do this off season, but they're gonna have to. Uh, they're gonna have. They gonna. They gonna have to save some fat off this, off this, off this, off this bone, bro. Off this meat, bro. It's gonna have to be a lot of fat being shed because last chance D is killing. It's gonna kill these guys' development.
You know, guys need roles. You know, they need, you know, they need positions with um with work instructions and and, and that's this should be their job. But a lot of these guys they throwing in the pocket. It's too many of these dudes who can't defend, bro. It's too many dudes playing out of position, and it's too many of these dudes on this team that don't compliment K Cunningham and J Ninety. And I say that, you know. Now, could you remix them around and, and, and change their position and change their lineup? Absolutely. Can some of these dudes play together in a lineup for a short period of time? Yes, but you can't count on them playing thirty plus minutes together. You know, and that's why I'm trying to some of these dudes. I'm trying to explain to people, but people will never understand it. You have people praising Ivy and Wiseman in that type of loss. And I don't care if they stormed back last night, man. Like it's get, like Piston fans are. I don't know if y'all ain't got nothing going on. It's getting pathetic, bro. And it's it's pretty much unbearable to watch at this point. So it is what it is. Check out the Detroit Piston Talk playlist. Thumbs up the video. Share the video. Subscribe to the channel. Next subscribe button is the bell icon button. Hit all notifications. Increase your chance to get notifications. We go live or drop a video. Hit my link tree. Find me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Spotify, Anchor, Cash App, Venmo, PayPal. Appreciate the love and support. Let me know what you girls and guys think in the comment section. Peace.